In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to model a simple part using the Mastercam software. On my screen, I have a drawing. It's called Drill Project 1. I have a part that measures 3 inches by 2 inches by 0.188 inch thick. There are several holes drilled on the part. I have a dimension defining the diameter of the hole, the number of holes. I have some instructions with the notes on the lower left corner of the drawing. It's telling me that the origins at the lower left corner of the part. I have instructions to spot drill all holes prior to drilling. And then all drilled holes are 0.201 in diameter. So I'm going to go to the Mastercam software. I have a new session of Mastercam open up on my, opened up on my screen. Some things that I'll do before I start. I'll go to the view tab. I'm going to turn off the axes. So select the show axes, toggle it off. And I'm going to use show nomens. And then you'll see a triad on your screen defining the X, Y, and Z axis. From here, to maximize my graphics area, I'm going to minimize the managers that are currently visible. So click on the X here, or you can go to view managers and turn the managers on off, turn the managers off this way. If I look at the drawing, a basic shape that would represent the outside profile of this part would be a rectangle. The origin is at the lower left corner of the part. You can see that the majority of the dimensions have the lower left corner in common. These dimensions have this edge in common. And then these dimensions here have this edge in common. So I'm going to set X0, Y0 at the lower left corner of the part. To start modeling up the part, I'm going to go to wireframe. Under the rectangle tool, you'll see a, tri a triangle. Select that to expand the menu and then select rectangular shapes. To define the rectangle, for the width value, I'm going to set this to 3. For the height value, I'll set it to 2. And for the origin of the rectangular shape, I'm going to set the origin at the lower left corner. When I move my cursor to the graphics area, you can see the rectangular shape attached to my cursor by the lower left corner. I'll position my cursor close to the origin. You'll see it lock on to the origin. At this time, I'll left click and the rectangular shape is placed on my screen. To finalize the creation of this rectangle, I'll select OK. I can right click on my screen, select Fit, and then I'll roll my scroll wheel to zoom out a little bit. The next thing I'll do, I'm gonna place the point. I'll place a piece of point geometry at the center of the hole that's closest to the origin. This hole here, is 0.6 in the X and 0.4 in the Y away from the origin. I'll go back in the master cam. From the wireframe tab, I'll select point position. Master cam is prompting me to create point position. I can hit the space bar. And in this field, I can type in the X, Y coordinates. X, 0.6, Y, 0.4 and then hit enter. You'll see that point appear on your screen. From here, select okay. We're exiting the point tool. The next thing I'll do, I'll draw in a circle that represents the drilled hole centered on the existing point. From the wireframe tab, circle center point. I have two ways to define the size of the circle. On the blueprint, we're given a diameter value. So in the diameter field, I'm gonna type in the diameter value, 0 0.201, enter. I move my cursor into the graphics area. You'll see a preview of that circle attached to your cursor. I'll position my cursor close to the point 
it'll lock into position. When I see it lock into position, left click, and that places a circle. This will be the only circle that I create using this tool, so I'll select OK to exit. I need to create additional copies of the point and the circle. The spacing between the columns or along the x-axis is 0.6. The spacing for the rows or the spacing along the y-axis is 0.4. I'll start by creating the additional copies along the x-axis. I'll select the point, I'll select the circle, and I'll use the Transform Translate tool. Transform, Translate. I'm going to use the copy method. The distance along the x-axis, 0.6. I'll need two, three additional copies. From here, I wanna stay within this tool, but I wanna finalize the creation of these additional circles along the x-axis. I'll select OK, create new operation. This time, I'll select all point entities and all circles. I can come over to my selection filter, select all point entities, and then come down to select all arc entities. When the points and the circles become selected, they'll take on a dashed yellow look. Once you have the correct item selected, end selection. It's still translating along the x-axis, so I'll come back over to the x field, zero out the x field, and then in the y field, 0.4. You can see that it's creating the three additional copies. If I needed to change the number of copies or instances, I could come over here, type in the value, or I can use these up and down arrows to increase or de decrease the number of instances. I need three additional copies. To finalize the creation of these copies and to exit the tool, I'll select OK. To clear the temporarily assigned colors, I can right click on my screen and select the clear colors icon. 